My name is Jack Goodman, and this is my 714 Dolby Atmos approved PMC based mix room. I'm a commercial and narrative sound designer, mixer uh, for music as well. Uh, it's too much. I've been working in the sound design and audio post-production community for the last 10 years uh, with clients like Apple, Ford, Disney, Nat Geo, ESPN, you name it. I first decided to build an Atmos room because first and foremost, I'm extremely passionate about audio. I wanted to have the highest fidelity listening experience I could personally have. I've spent my whole life trying to have my own studio and my own room, and I know where this technology is going, and I know where I want my career to go, and I want to safeguard that, and I want to be ready for the future. But then as I started learning about this technology and learning about its adaptive nature and how often a consumer can actually hear it and experience it in one way or another, I realized it's just going to take over. A lot of people will say, oh, well, if I don't have a room like this, I'm never going to hear it. But they don't understand like what this room is, is the master great experience. This room was designed to work and translate in all the other experiences. The file is adaptive and it's going to disperse itself correctly to that device that can include sound bars, cars, headphones. Consumers don't even need to know what's happening. They're going to start to enjoy the audio more as and they're not going to know why it doesn't matter. But the point is, it's like this is a thing. It's not going anywhere. So I decided to get behind it. Building an Atmos room is really, really hard. That's what I learned when I met Russ at RSPE is sure you can do it. I had actually done it. I had done a variation of it myself, but what it was that I did, I'm not sure. Cause when I actually heard what it is and how it should work, I learned that it's something that you really can't do alone. If there's one uh, piece of advice I would say to anybody who's trying to set this up alone right now, uh, I would say let the professionals do their job. Your job is not to also know how to be a acoustic technician, right? And also like a high level engineer. Your job is to mix. So let the professionals do their job, you know? Learn, learn as much as you like with them as they're doing it too. You could spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in a room like this to actually make it a benchmark room. There's no way to avoid these acoustic problems. You have to address them somehow. That's why when Russ recommended the attack wall, I didn't. It, it was really a saving grace. I didn't really know what it was, but when we fired these speakers up, it was amazing. This room sounds as good as any Atmos room I've ever been in. You can have great speakers uh, and you can set them up and they won't do great things unless you have great acoustics. I work in another studio that was set up by a high-end company and it's supposed to be fantastic. And I thought it was fantastic. And the first time I listened to mixes Stereo 5.1 or Atmos in this room, I realized how serious of a problem I had, which was that now I have a room where I can hear mistakes. The fact that this attack wall is actually presenting to me these issues in front of these beams and those windows is what's the craziest part about this setup. We're talking about basic volume adjustments. We're talking about the dialogue being too quiet or the snare drum being too loud. Like, I'm not even talking about like nuanced stuff. And that goes across the board for every room I've been in that's at this point, like either not properly acoustically treated or doesn't have PMCs. <laughs> I considered other brands of speakers. I had already a 7.1 system of other brands of speakers, and I just wanted to add a few overheads and call it a day. Um, but after Russ brought me into the studio and gave me demo after demo after demo of as many speakers as I wanted to hear and any setup I wanted to hear, uh, I started to realize like there's just no comparison. I started talking to my peers uh, in both post-production and audio mixing and uh, across the board, PMCs just had, they pack a punch. The biggest thing was the ability to go to RSPE and have demos and listen to stuff. For me, one of the biggest elements in my relationship with RSPE was who I got to meet with Russ. PMC came to this studio and listened. Dolby came to the studio and, and measured it. They spent an entire day here, and that was only because of Russ. I could have called Dolby a thousand times, they wouldn't have answered the phone. Those types of professionals, the guy who hung these speakers, like one of the best in the world at that. Just meeting that guy alone was like a monumental experience. This room has allowed me to impress my clients, you know, on every single scale. When they come in 
and also when they hear what we did when they leave. When people come to me, my clients will often worry. The first thing they say is, well, we love this space, but will it translate when I leave? Because I go into these other mix sessions and I go to my laptop or my phone and it's like not the same. And I'm like, well, here it will be the same. That's the point of this room and these speakers and this company and what they brought to me building it together. 